All right. So this is our uh, lesson on hepatitis. Hopefully your assignment was doable. It was a lot longer uh, than some of the ones that I've designed. So I wanted to go over this um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so there were a lot of different ways you could group this. And there wasn't any way that was in particular right or wrong. Um, but I wanted to show you uh, how I would group them. So again, the tasks were try to group the causes, how common were each one of them. And so there's going to be some overlap in how I talk about this. Um, what are the symptoms of hepatitis? And that was going to be very common no matter what the individual causes were. Um, is the liver damage reversible or not? Um, how do you avoid the disease? Um, or can you? Um, and then if you get it, how do you treat it? So a lot of the work was going to go up front in your groupings and how you got them. So that was going to be the big part. So let's go over that a little bit. So there's no right or wrong specifically. Um, let me show you how, how I did it and how much of the medical community was really would really do this. Um, so my groupings were um, as follows. Um, I split out the infections. Um, and, you know, a lot of people could have done this where you could have thought of infection and then not infectious causes. Um, and normally I lump things and I do big things and then just leave it like that. But this was one where I think it made sense to split things out a little bit more. So that's what I did. So I did fecal oral infections, which is just gross to think about, um, which gives you hepatitis A and E, um, bloodborne infections, which is hepatitis B and D, and I put those together intentionally, and then hepatitis C, which is off on its own, um, the nothing you can do about category, which is autoimmune hepatitis, um, bad luck, um, uh, which would be NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Um, and you might be tempted to put that with the nothing you can do about it category. Um, and I'll, at the end, explain why I separated those two out. And then toxin-related, um, alcohol-induced hepatitis. So those were the five I did. It. If you did bigger groupings, great. If you just decided, you know what, I'm splitting everything out, fine. There's no right or wrong in how you think about this. So, so how common are all of these? And I did this based in the United States and understand um, when I reported these cases, um, it's how many cases were, were reported on a one-year basis. And as a background, there are about 330 million people in the United States. Okay, so this is how many cases are reported per year. And then with some of these, there are more people that go on to chronically live with them. So just keep that in mind. That's what we're dealing with. So for your fecal oral infections for hepatitis A, there are a little bit over 3,300 cases that were known to be reported in 2017, the last year that the CDC had uh, data for, and there were probably double the amount of cases that actually happened. Um, that's the only one, the only ones they had serology and known to be reported. Um, hepatitis E was rare, and I did a lot of digging with the CDC and couldn't find anything. Um, there were 47 cases reported in the state of California, and California is, I believe, a little bit under 40 million people in the state. Um, and there were 47 cases reported in 2016. So that gives you an idea of how many cases there are not of hepatitis E. Both of these cases are much more common in third world countries where your sanitation and your water supplies are not well taken care of. So that makes a big difference. So huge difference between first world countries with well-treated water and third world countries where you've got a poor water supply. 